All right, uh, this is Burn the Ship. Uh, we have uh, Sherla Morris with us with RT Counseling, right? Yes, RT Counsel. Counsel, thank you for coming. Thank you for joining us. We are an entrepreneur podcast out of Atlanta, and we've done over 300 podcasts uh, with uh, um, medium to small to actually larger size entrepreneurs just to really see where they came from, how they got the idea, you know, things that they, they overcame. All of us overcame a lot of stuff in the last three years. Um, and uh, and obviously, you're... you're, you're, you're your business in general is needed a lot during this time, and I want to learn more about that. So tell us, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and then how you got started. Okay, great. Thank you, um, and thank you guys for having yeah. me. By the way, uh, my name is Cheryl Morris, and I am originally from the islands, so I'm from Trinidad and Tobago. Um, so I came here about 15 years ago. Went to school. Um, decided I was going to be a social worker and I was going to change the world. There you go. Okay? <laughs> and then I got into social work and um, then I realized, hey, I wanted to provide a service and more direct services with my clients. And so when I was introduced into counseling, I just fell in love with it. And so I started to do the work um, and I worked in different agencies. Like I worked at a mental health agency with kids in foster care Mm -hmm. and I saw the need for quality service there. But I was like, you know what, if we could get these parents, we can get it together here, you know. And so after transitioning from that agency, I worked at another agency that offered domestic violence services Mm -hmm. and it opened my eyes to a whole new world. And so I was working with these moms who had experienced domestic violence and were in a shelter and just offering that individual counseling and doing psychoeducational groups. I realized, you know what, I love this work, you know? And so now um, that was during, that was during 2019, 2020, um, and then COVID came and just disrupted our whole lives, yeah, right? Yeah, for sure. And so I was like, you know what? I saw a gap in services, and I wanted to be a part of filling that. And so that is where my um, dream for my vision, my vision for my business started. Mm. Um, and I remember thinking to myself, where am I going to get some money to invest in my business? Sure. And so... Um, I remember getting a refund check and I was like, you know what? This is seed money. Okay. And I'm about to invest in my business. I, I wasn't at a point where I could do it independently just yet because I was still doing supervision. I was still doing a lot, but I was like, I'm going to plant this seed here and hopefully I will see it grow into something amazing. And so, um, it's been two years, well, a year and change now. And so my business is in a better space and I'm able to really do individual counseling through my business now. And I'm really excited about that. That's awesome. And so, yeah. Are you, are you counseling? Uh, is, is there a specific, um, 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 discipline, uh, kids, war vets, there's some kind of vertical that you, that you focus on? Uh, so I prefer to work with adults, Okay. to be honest. Um, while working with kids, I love that. Mm-hmm. So I can work with adolescents and adults, but something about working with kids would have me up all night. Mm-hmm. And so when you're doing this type of work, you have to know what population you can do well with and um, project for sustainability purposes. Yep. When it comes to working with adults, I can help you getting um, the services that you need, introduce you to what... Um, what would be helpful, but what you do with that information is on you. Mm -hmm. And so I'm able to give you that information. Now take it and run with it. Yeah. And so that's my passion about working with adults. Sure. They have autonomy over what they get to do with the information they've received. Man, so I'm about to tell you a Meemaw story. So so my Meemaw was a a sheriff uh, deputy, and uh, she, uh, this was, you know, back in the day, so there wasn't specialized counseling really, Especially for, you know, cities that were, you know, 50 miles outside of a major city. You know, there's a podunk, right? And uh, so she was the count. She was the uh, liaison for the sheriff office to the to the foster care. Mm. So it was, she did that for like years and years and years. And she loved it because mm. she felt like she could do more work there than the, even the police on the streets did. Wow. Because she could touch a lot, a lot of people. But she would talk about that a lot. Of, and, and I'm going, now I'm going, what? That the industry, counseling industry has come a long way. Yeah, it has. It um, has. Yeah, it, which is a good thing. But then, and then, of course, now with the technology and the the ADD and 
and high levels of stress and COVID didn't help this whole thing out. So, but I'll tell you what came out of it. I I think that is, um, online, like, uh, Skype and zoom counseling, right? Like that wasn't really, I'm sure it was a thing, but not as high, Mm -hmm. you know, high volume as it is now, because I, sometimes I go, you don't really have to be, some people don't have to have a, like the premium, Freudian counselor. Mm. They just need to be able to get it out and talk to somebody about yes, it, right? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so, um, I glad I'm glad you introduced the virtual piece. Um, prior to I think COVID, um, mm. a lot of us were just doing um, counseling in the office. So mm. when COVID hit us, we had to pivot as agencies and individuals who do this work and now offer this service virtually. And so um, many of us went online for the first time. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and yeah. um, we've mm-hmm. been able to really create a space where people don't even have to leave their homes to get the service that they need. Sure. There are limitations to virtual counseling, though. Of course but in terms of practicability and being able to have you literally, you can sit down in your home and just turn on your computer, turn on your phone, and you can get into a therapy mm-hmm. session. That is amazing. That is the service that I offer. I offer virtual therapy to people. Yep. Um, they can just come on. They they are, right now I use this um, platform called Simple Practice. Mm-hmm. And so you can just get onto that practice and we can schedule an appointment and you can see me virtually, and it's HIPAA compliant, and we can store your information online. We can schedule appointments. It's really practical. So there is so many pros to this work and to how easy you can access it. But I see therapy, there's a lot of therapy being offered right mm-hmm. now. I'll say this. And so for me, um, it's important to not just offer therapy, but to offer a quality service. Mm-hmm. Um And I'm not saying that anyone else's service is quality, but there's different things. When you think of food, for instance, you're just fast foods everywhere, right? But that's not a five-course meal. Mm -mm. Your mental health should be taken as a priority. So go and really, like, take your time and decide who would be the best fit for you. Right. Um, You don't have to accept the first person that you met up and on and heard offer therapy take your time vet that person is this a right fit for me because you're you're allowing this person to enter into a space with you that's so vulnerable and you want to feel safe in that space with that person so what she's saying i'm going to read between lines here if you're a counselor (laughs) and you're giving mcdonald's mcdonald's style counseling stop doing that and if you're getting mcdonald's style counseling go to somebody else i'm just i'm I'm just reading between lines what you you had said uh you had said something and, and you said that you know, there's there's something about you know doing it on virtual virtually, and there's something that that you had you need when it's face to face. What is that? What is that piece that is important? And I know, it, like to me, it doesn't have to be every counseling session, but mm-hmm. there is a thing about human being, being in the proximi- space. proximity yeah. of I can feel you, and I can feel your mm-hmm. your uh, mm-hmm. your emotions, and I can I can understand you. I can you know I can hear you talk. Yeah, you hear the inflections. Well, you can still get that with the virtual. The limitations with the virtual is tech issues. Uh, If the internet goes out, you're in a situation. And some agencies offer contingencies for that. So you can have um you can call the client back or something. When it comes to in person sessions, I can guarantee privacy. Whereas when it's virtual, um, I am hacked. trusting you. It could be hacked. It could yeah. be hacked, but I'm also trusting you to go into an environment that's secure. Sure. Um, I've had sessions with people where I'm here virtually with you, and I see somebody sneaking in the background. Sure. <laughs> and yeah. it's not that easy to be that vulnerable with someone when you have walls that can hear you, yeah, right? Of course. And so being able to have that in person session. It's good for that. Plus, we as therapists, we read the body, right? We're looking at you. We're looking at things such as how is your foot moving? When you're in a virtual session, unfortunately, we're relying on you to tell us what's going on with you Mm -hmm. um, because we can't see everything that's going on with you. However, that does not discount from the fact that you can receive high quality therapy services virtually. Let me ask you a question. I um, don't have a job. Mm-hmm. I don't have much money at all. Mm-hmm. I'm getting government assistance to 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 survive, yeah. but I need that that help. Uh, how do I do that? 
Okay, so there are many ways to get therapy. So, for instance, a lot of us, we offer a sliding scale mm -hmm. um, based on your income. If you do not have insurance, we would work with you. There are many therapists that offer Medicaid um, services. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then there's offers that, like, with regular... Um, insurance panels mm -hmm. so we don't want to limit who can receive services sure um reach out to your provider and see what um, provisions they have in place for your particular circumstances i mean like the therapist that you want to uh, okay that can be the person that you want to connect with sure um as a social worker it's my job to look for resources for sure. people also so coming from both a clinical side and a social work side, I'm looking at it from so many different angles. Yep. Let me ask you a question. Let's 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 turn this from from the actual consumer side okay. to the to the to the business the, the business mm -hmm. side mm -hmm. of, of this. So what I've seen now, um, and I never saw pre COVID, okay. is I'm getting these emails going. You need therapy. We have. Is this virtual thing sucking margin? out of the business side is it making it cheaper i know it's probably making it more affordable but look at the end of the day we have to make money mm -hmm. and we want to it, it's not a bad thing to make a lot of money yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah you want to so have you seen the margins in your business go down because of that well i can't speak for my business my business is new so yep. i think being able to speak for the overall therapeutic experience of mm -hmm. other professionals i can't really speak for that um, but I can tell you this, um, there is a fear that um, because it's coming so, it just appears when it's being shared like this, it feels like, okay, are you watering down the service mm -hmm. just to get clients yes, sure. in, you know? <clears throat> um, and so you don't want to wear I've out seen some the cheap, therapist. I've seen some cheap marketing material out there. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Yeah. And, and right now, I think if my insurance would pay... Like I would end up having to pay like two hundred dollars a month, mm -hmm. and, and that's uh, like I think I mean, maybe one session a week or maybe one I, I can't remember, mm -hmm. but that that's what my insurance would pay. Mm -hmm. So it's not crazy expensive, mm -hmm. but um, I've seen some that were the marketing material out there. They're like, hey, this we have a thousand therapy yeah. or therapists yeah. and counselors that you can talk to, and it's yeah. it's 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 kind of like the Uber of therapy. Mm -hmm, if, if, mm -hmm. if that makes so, sense. <laughs> this is the, <laughs> I have to shift in aren't my you, seat. Aren't, aren't you glad that, I, that I'm asking <laughs> you this barn burner of questions, Bailey? I'm killing it over here. Yeah, it's I'm a like more delicate, Povich. it's more than delicate, it's a delicate conversation to mm -hmm. have. Yeah. You know, um, the obviously there's a need, just like there's a need for food, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but not every service provider can give you the same level of services, mm -hmm. right? So I would definitely say, again, don't overcommit to a commercial. Mm -hmm. Sure. Go, go and actually explore that. the services. I know there are some agencies um, that do have great therapists that they hire, but some of these therapists are experiencing burnout because mm -hmm. they're they're um, being bombarded with so much work, and in order to make they're their also margins, stressed out to meet their needs it's like they have to they have to take more on than than they should be taking on because let's be honest therapy for the clinician can be a heavy work yes right <laughs> yes you're hearing problems all day of course. hearing trauma every day it's it could be heavy it's um, like dentists they're inflicting pain yeah all the yeah. time and and they're they're pulling that pain mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. uh -huh. and so some people might think okay well you're just talking no i'm literally sitting in a space with you and then helping you walk through and that. you're taking burden on and i'm saying you might not that. think that but yeah there you are <laughs> That's why it's, it's best when you're getting into this work to figure out as a clinician how that how you can release some of that. So, for instance, go back to what I said earlier. I had to know my population mm -hmm. because I knew, like, okay, I'm an immigrant, right? Um, and I'm a citizen, but I understand the immigrant experience. Sure. Being, I feel like I struggle with counseling immigrants because it hits different. Mm -hmm. I go tell, home tell and more, I think about it. Tell me more of that, about that, though. I Just, go home she feels it. and I think about right. it. I remember I had a client that I was serving who had experienced domestic violence mm -hmm. and they were an immigrant and their story hit me so hard because I understand how that fear of, you know, what my placement, my safety, all of these things combined. Right. And I remember going home. This was a, an adult and I was going home thinking about this person. 
I'm, I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm thinking about their story. Mm -hmm. um, it's because it hit me because of my connection to it. To the personal end. Yeah. And so I knew that, okay, this population may not be the one that I should focus on because of how I carry it. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I can deal with domestic violence and, it, and it, it's like I go home and I can sleep. At night, that interesting? And there's nothing, you know, and I hear the heavy stuff, but I have mastered how to release that. But with like little kids, mm. when I leave you, I'm thinking, who did I leave you with? Right, right. Right? Yeah. And so that population hit different. Uh -huh. um, whereas with me um, working with adults, I worked um, with women and right now I work, um, I also work for a company as well. And I'm working with other types of adults that mm. are experiencing crisis, that are you know, maybe um, partially hospitalized people, I don't take their issues home with me. Mm. Even dealing with suicidal ideations, I don't take it home with me. But I knew that I took home immigrant issues with me. So saying that, if I'm a therapist mm -hmm. that have, has had trauma with suicide within my family, mm -hmm. I might take the suicide home yeah. more. Yeah, yeah. So being able to discern that. So every, they say every therapist needs a better therapist. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. so well, it's a, it's a, it's a, well, it's a lawyer, you know, a lawyer that, what well, they say, a, a lawyer that uh, represents himself as a, has a has a fool for a client. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Right? You don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so you really need to be able to know yourself. With this with this um, type of work, you're exploring a lot of things for people, but it's bringing up, up a lot of things of for you. So if you have some unhealed issues, during your sessions, you'd be surprised how it comes up. So you need to make sure that you're doing the work for you as well. That's right. That's um, right. Well, this has been awesome. Um, tell me how to get a hold of you, because here's what's cool about this is we deal with a lot of businesses that uh, like the health food store mm. that, that uh, Jackie that came before, which yes, she can reach America cause she's trying to get consultants to come in and, and do this. But when you're talking about retail, you, you, you really only can do this block of people, right? Yeah. That live here. You can't even do the other side of Birmingham, right? You do where you can sell mm -hmm. to your, to your community. Mm -hmm. But with her, you can be in California mm -hmm. and she can talk to you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so how do I get a hold of you? Okay, so you can get a hold of me via my email. Um, you can reach me at smars at rtcouncil.org, and I'll spell that for you. So it's S-M-O-R-R-I-S -R -R at rtcouncel.org. Um, you can find me on Instagram at rtcouncil. So R T C O U N S E L. Let me just say this, guys. I'm not the best social media person yet. <laughs> yeah, um, that's right. I'm she's speaking it into existence. I'm working and on it behind the scenes. She's season. on a podcast, so this is this is this is good too, right? <laughs> Thank you, guys. And also, you can call my business line. Um, mm -hmm. The number is two zero five. Five three six nine eight five nine, and um, if I can't answer, leave me a voicemail. She'll call back. Um, I'll call you back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and um, I did want to mention that um, when you were talking about types of services, so as a therapist. You may be licensed to work in one state, but my business does not limit the type of services that I'm doing. So right now, my business is also creating groups for parenting classes. It's also creating a domestic violence group and an anger management group. And I also am cultivating a trauma-informed service training that I plan to market to businesses so that they can equip their employees mm. with how to um, serve clients who've gone through a lot. Because sometimes we have assumptions about people and we we don't know how to de-escalate a situation mm -hmm. maybe and so um i want to be able to offer that services to some businesses so that they can you know equip their employees for their work as well cool cool thank you for coming in we appreciate it uh we'll see you tonight at the mixer i'll tell you about it when yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and uh i appreciate it. this has been burn the ship mm -hmm. uh you guys be kind to each other out there yeah thank you guys for having mm -hmm. me yeah. thank you bye bye you did a great job yeah, it was awesome.